What is good, YouTube, and welcome back to a brand new video. So do you guys remember when the Hawks had the number one overall pick and they took Zachary Richouche? Well, they also traded away to John St. Murray this offseason. Well, yeah, we're finally getting to that video today. The reason why I waited so long on doing this video is because I thought the Hawks would do some other stuff, but uh, it's just been so quiet in the NBA offseason right now. Very surprising. I think there's still a lot that could happen, but things are not happening. So what we're going to do today is jump in and rebuild the Atlanta Hawks after they have drafted Zachary Richouche and traded away to John T. Murray. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one and subscribe if you are new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciated. Also, the share scenario we are using today is Joda Kelmer. Uh, apparently, you can find it on PS5 and Xbox Series X or S, so make sure to look it up if you're looking for a share scenario to use. But let's talk about what the Hawks have done this offseason. So, of course, the number one overall pick, they elect not to draft Alex Sar. Not necessarily their fault, Alex Sar did not want to come play for the Hawks. They want to work out for them. So they like to take Zachary Richouche. Of course, they pretty much had to choose between DeJon Tamir or Trey Young this offseason. And they chose Trey Young. Trading away DeJon Tamir to the Pelicans. They get Zachary, or sorry, not Zachary Richouche. They get Larry Nance and Dyson Daniels back in return. And Atlanta Hawks don't have their future draft pick. So this team is going to try to remain competitive. And I still think there's a couple things they could do, like maybe trading Capello away. Maybe trade DeAndre Hunter. A lot of things I feel like the Hawks could still do. But at this moment, like I said, it's been very quiet in the NBA offseason. But regardless, I don't think we're making any other free agency signings here. I believe the Hawks right now have too many players under contract right now anyway for us to even sign anyone. So we're not going to worry about that. So we're just going to go straight to next season and get straight in this rotation. And we'll probably make decisions on the roster at the upcoming deadline is probably what we'll do in today's video. But uh, I'm excited to see... What we can do with this Hawks team. I think the goal to try to will be to try to keep Trey Young throughout the video because it feels like the Spurs got their point guard Stephon Castle. So I don't think we can get our picks back from San Antonio. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be a route we can take. Although it would be something the Hawks maybe should try. So we do ha uh, have to cut a couple players. So let's see what we got to do. So at this, as I'm recording this, I don't think the Hawks have cut anybody in real life. So I have to make these decisions here, which are never really easy. But I guess I'll start with cutting Bruno Fernando. Because the Hawks got Cody Zeller back in that, uh, also got, I didn't mention, Cody Zeller came back in that DeJounte Murray trade. And he got a three-year deal. I don't know if it's all non-guaranteed, but kind of weird, I guess. I, I mean, Cody Zeller feels like a guy that probably shouldn't be in the NBA anymore, but he still somehow finds a way to get on uh, rosters. Fred G, I think, just signed a new contract. Then you have Guy, and then Lydell came over from that Murray trade as well. So who are we going to cut is the question. So we already cut Bruno Fernando. I think it's got to be Guy, unfortunately, even though I don't really want it to be. But I mean, I don't know who else to cut. So yeah, it'll be Guy. Although I would usually just choose to cut Cody Zeller. He just got a new contract. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. But whatever. Uh, kind of tough decision to start the video. Don't love that. But Trey Young, Bogdan Madonovich, DeAndre Hunter, Jalen Johnson, Okungwu, Capella, Dyson Daniels, Zachary Shashe, Larry Nance, and Kobe Bufkin is your starting five or is your rotation currently at the moment. So I do believe I want to find a way to get Risha Shea to start, but I'm not sure we'll be able to. So I guess we could have DeAndre Hunter come off the bench and just start Risha Shea over him. Yeah, I guess that's probably how we'll do things. If we want any chance of being good, we need to develop Risha Shea. So let's go ahead and throw him in the starting five immediately and let him cook, I guess, and see what he can do as a starting, you know, starting with Trey Young in the starting five. Like I said, I think there is definitely some moves we can make at the deadline. I think Trey Young, Jalen Johnson are going to stay throughout the video, along with Risha Shea and Okongwu. But everyone else is probably up for a trade. I think Daniels will probably stay as well. Uh, but yeah, we'll probably mess with the roster quite a bit at the deadline. I don't think we'll be very good this season, but you know, I could be surprised. Who knows? And then uh, shot tendencies. I want to look at that. So Jalen Johnson is an 85, which is kind of nice. Now, I want to see what Risha Shea's was. So it's a 70. I don't mind that for his rookie season. So let's go ahead. So my year number one, and I more than likely will see you guys at the deadline, probably to at least trade Capella away since he's on an expiring contract. I don't think I will be resigning him. Today's video is brought to you by two softwares designed to help you beat the sports books. If you love betting on sports, having two softwares, softwares like this is so clutch to finding good plays right in front of you without having to research on a bunch of new tabs and all that. So basically, let's start off on Odds Jam's positive EV tool. So basically what this does is... It compares discrepancies across traditional sports books such as FanDuel, DraftKings, Fanatic Sportsbook, all kinds of sports books. You name it, they probably have it on here. Uh, so if we go ahead and look at this play, for example, uh, example, Fabian Ruiz over one and a half players shot. So I know nothing about soccer. Actually, that's not a good example. There's not enough uh, data. I mean, it is kind of late at night as I'm recording this. So let's see. So maybe we got Yankees money line. So basically, the reason why we would take this on BetMGM, because as you can see, 
BetMGM is giving you the best price compared to all the other sports books listed out here. So you get this at minus 120 compared to minus 130 and minus 144. It's just basically like car shopping and then kind of close minus 122 on, I believe that's cut if not mistaken. But yeah, so you get the best price, just like car shopping. If you're going to go buy a car, you're going to go buy it at the cheapest place possible, which is why having a tool like this, like I said, is so amazing to finding good plays right in front of you uh, for those traditional sports books. And then another tool I love to use is DGF's optimizer. So basically what this does, it actually focuses more on the DFS app, which is price picks, the more popular ones nowadays, the pop uh, price picks, underdog parlay play better, all those DFS apps. And they do pretty much the same exact thing I just showed you. But for the DFS apps, there's a lot of esports players on the board right now. Um, and so, yeah, basically what it does. So let's see if we can find with multiple data points. So, yeah, we got uh, here. So I don't know how to say this dude's name, but as you can see, under eight and a half kills. The reason why you take that over on price picks is because, as you can see, hot streak and parlay play offering it at seven and a half and six and a half. So you're getting a clear discrepancy over on price picks, which is why you absolutely play this over on price picks at an under when you have two other data points telling you, hey, um, six and a half and seven and a half is where we have our line. So, that's why having these tools are so clutch to be in the sports books. Betting with math is the best way to go. Uh, DGF also offers an AI slip generator. It basically generates slips for you, but nothing is here at the moment. And then Oz Jam also has that same thing as uh, DGF. They also have a fantasy optimizer. Well, it's basically the same thing. But yeah, both these tools offer a variety of things. So make sure to check them out. Both links are down in the description below. Use code CRUSHBULLS for a percentage off on each app. I think it's 15 on Oz Jam and then DGF. 25% off you guys this first month. So make sure to check those out if you're serious about betting on sports. Other than that, let's get back to the video. So I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. We're 33 and 18 at the trade deadline. I don't know if the Hawks will reflect that in real life, but it is 2K. And for whatever reason, they absolutely love the Hawks. So uh, here we are. We are very good in the Eastern Conference as, like I said, 33 and 18 on the season. So my plan was to originally trade Clint Capella here, but we're so damn good. And I have a feeling it's because of Capella. Rebounding is such an important stat in 2K and Capella, you know, obviously a good rebounder in the game. Uh, so he's averaging 10 and 8. Uh, but we are still going to try to move him because he's on an expiring contract. So I guess in this regard, though, we're going to try to maybe get a win now piece back. Now, Jota Kilmer did say that he thinks he fixed the trade finder being so wonky. Like, as you guys have seen the last couple of videos, we've trade we've been able to trade for like Kevin Durant for like no value. So let's see if that's actually fixed. And so far, I'm not seeing anything too crazy in here. So I think he might have fixed it, which is a W. So yeah, that was kind of uh so yeah, the Suns aren't offering me Kevin Durant for Capella. Um at least it, it looks good for this tra specific trade. Uh it, I don't see no like Kevin Durant and LeBron James being offered to me. So that's good at least. Uh definitely took it, you know, definitely looked into that and hey, he might have fixed it. So that's awesome. Okay. So, uh maybe we don't trade Capella. Uh part of me wanted to just kind of see what uh, the trade finder looked like and it looks like he fixed it, which is amazing uh but i mean we're very good right now so i feel like i maybe we shouldn't sell maybe we keep capella i guess we're gonna try to be good and capella is contributing to that i won't i won't trade anyone let's just keep it up 33 and 18 on the season not something i see the hawks doing in real life but here we are right now let's uh let's see if we can continue the streak and be a high seed in the eastern conference so at the end of the season, Shea wins MVP. Alex Sar is your rookie of the year. Russell Westbrook, six man as well. Uh, and then you, or why did I say as well? Russell Westbrook wins six man of the year. And then you got defensive player going to Wimby. Got to George, most improved those new Jazz unis. That's cool. That's on here. John Morant, clutch player. And Nick Nurse is your coach of the year. And Jervison is your executive. So uh, I'm assuming we might get Trey Young on one of these teams. And we do. So Trey Young makes an all NBA third team. So love to see that. 25 and 10. And uh, it led to winning. So it looks like trading to John T. Murray away, at least according to 2K, was the right move. Although, like I said, we've seen in the past where the Hawks are good pretty much no matter what. And we end up as a second seed in the East. Now, I don't know if the Hawks will do that in real life. It wouldn't surprise me if they were better just because I feel like the Hawks do have a talented roster. They're going to be wrong, but they just keep fighting around the plan rather than being like a straight up playoff team, if you know what I mean. So, uh, but we'll see how we do. Maybe we go win a championship in year number one. I don't know. So let's go to a nine minute rotation. So it looks like Hunter finally got back in the starting five. So I guess maybe I didn't start Risha Shea. I don't know. Someone's probably pissed off at me in the comment section below like usual. But let's go ahead and put Risha Shea in for the playoffs. And let's go ahead and see if we can win a series against Chicago Bulls. So Chicago, we got Kobe White, Josh Giddy, Zach Levine, Williams, Busevich, Lonzo, and Io DeSumo. So my current round against Chicago, and we are going to beat them in six. So, hey, we won a playoff series, and now we get Detroit. So Detroit has Cade, Hardaway, Asar, Tobias Harris, Jalen Duran, Jaden Ivey, Beasley, Sasser, Isaiah Stewart. So many current round against them, and we are down three to two. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can 
come back and win game six to force a game seven and go back to Atlanta. I mean, Detroit is one of those teams that obviously probably also won't be very good, but two case high in them as well. And we lose by one point. Very disappointing. But hey, I guess that's uh, progress in Atlanta or sorry, New Orleans with Murray get to the finals, but they lose to the 76ers. Okay. LeBron James is retiring. Chris Paul is retiring. And so is Al Horford. But let's go straight to the lottery. So I don't believe we are going to have a pick this offseason. I believe our pick. So the Lakers. Oh, that Lakers pick. I forgot about that. We got that from the DeJounte Murray trade. 2025 Lakers pick goes to us. Actually kind of crazy and clutch that we're about to get this in this draft class. Totally forgot about that. That's actually insane. Now, if we could get number one odds, that would be fair. Or the number one overall pick, that would be fantastic. Let's see if we get lucky. And we drop to six. Okay, that sucks. But hey, still getting a lottery pick and we get Sacramento's picks. We have two first round picks in this draft. Fantastic. And Houston via that trade, get the number one overall pick. Man, they, uh, you know, we could maybe send them Trey Young. They want to seem to win. We get number one overall pick. We get Cooper Flag. That would be kind of cool. Not going to lie. Uh, but, you know, Houston would be one of those teams that maybe do something dumb like that because it seems like they really want to win and don't care about the young core anymore. But, I mean, do you really pass up on a generational prospect like Cooper Flag? I don't know, man. I don't know. So, we'll see when we get at number six overall. But kind of sucks that we fell. Um, would have been nice to jump up into, like, top three, get, like, Ace Bailey or something. But uh, it is what it is. So, we are going to fell this coaching staff. And then we're going to figure out how are we going to move forward. So we just got past, like I said, we didn't get, or we just got past the first round, which is nice, but it got eliminated in round two by Detroit. So now we got to find a way to get better. So it is nice though, that we made the playoffs and our draft pick didn't, you know, become a lottery pick and San Antonio didn't benefit off that. So that feels good. So we have six and 16, both of them not being our own picks. Is there anybody I'm like looking to trade on draft night? I don't think so. I don't think there's anyone I'm looking to move here. So, uh, Houston, like I said, we could try to go talk to them and try to give them something for number one. But, you know, it's, it's crazy. I think Houston might be if they did do something like that. I don't think they'd pass up in Cooper flag. And I stand corrected. So, Ace Bailey goes to Houston. Uh, BJ, okay. So, San Antonio is about to get Cooper flag at number three is what you're telling me. And that's insane. But whatever. Okay. C gets Dylan Harper. So, they get another guard. Uh, Nolan goes to uh, Houston. So, we're going to be picking at number six. We have Hugo, Trey Johnson, or Liam. So I think uh, since I get Hugo, I've gotten Hugo a couple times. Trey Johnson, I could get as well. Uh, we don't really have a starting shooting guard at the moment. Uh, so I think I might take Trey Johnson here. Trey Johnson, all-star, Liam, starter. So And then Hugo, of course. I know Hugo is a stud. Uh, but like I said, I have gotten him in a couple of videos. Although he'd be perfect to put at the shooting guard. But I'll switch it up and take Trey Johnson today out of Texas. So... Welcome to Atlanta. Part of me wanted to take... Okay, guys. Hugo fell to 16. I'm sorry, but I'm taking him. He fell all the way to 16. We're taking him there. So the best of both worlds. So yeah, if he fell to me there, I'm not going to pass up on that. So we're going to go ahead and take uh, Booker here in round two, and we can call it a draft. So that is a fantastic draft, to be honest. I love that. So Trey Johnson, Hugo, welcome to Atlanta. And Booker, uh, we can sign as well. Which, with those two additions, I think that makes Bogdan a little bit more expendable. Perhaps. So we got Kobe Bufkin, Nicola that we'll accept, and then qualifying offers, Jalen Johnson must resign, of course. So we'll make sure to do that. Uh, so Capella is also a free agent. We are going to resign him. It seems like he was part of our success. Um, I'm going to give him a two year deal. I think the four year deal will be a little too aggressive. And then we'll, you know, lock up Jalen Johnson on a really good contract. So we can give him like 18 a year. I think that's pretty solid. So we'll do that. So we'll sign both Capella and Jalen Johnson back. So that's great. Now we need to figure out how we're going to attack next. So. Trey Young and Daniels right now is our backcourt or point guard rotation at the moment. Uh, Dyson Daniels could start in the future, like I said, but he also is 6'7", that I think we can get away with him at the small forward. Although we don't really need him at the small forward because we have, you know, Risha Shea and Hunter at the moment. Uh, and then our center rotation is definitely locked into Kong and Capella for sure. Johnson's our power forward for sure. So I think we got to trade Bogdan away. I like the idea of throwing Hugo and Trey Johnson the fire right away to see what they can do. So I think we'll start there, and then Dyson Daniels will stay as the backup point guard. We could even move him to small forward if we wanted to, and maybe like move Hunter to power forward or whatever. So there's a lot of different things we could do. But let's go ahead and trade away Bogdan, because I would love to see these young guys we just drafted get minutes over Bogdan, unfortunately. So we're going to make this trade with the Indiana Pacers. No particular reason why the Pacers would do this. Obviously, you could think of maybe a couple things. Maybe the Pacers want to get off Obi Toppin's contract. They want to clear salary for the future. Uh, Bodon only has one year guaranteed left in his contract. So maybe that's the reasoning for Indiana doing this. They're still getting a good player in Bodon as well. 
but we're getting a backup power forward which is kind of what we need at the moment so we get obi top and as our new backup power forward, which feels great so now we pretty much have a rotation set in stone which i absolutely love so now we can go straight to player progression not worry about signing anybody in free agency although we could i kind of like where we're at as a roster and i'm really going to give the keys to you know hugo and uh also uh trey johnson to try to develop as much as possible so risha shea is up to a 79 that's great daniels is developing and you got jalen johnson up uh kong Wu's up and capella's up i think eventually just kind of looking at this roster though we might need a second star next to trey young but we really have to look at how do we do that do we just let one of the young guys develop into that i know hugo can definitely do that uh, or do we trade for it? And if we do, we got to make sure it's the right partner because obviously Atlanta tried that with DeJounte Murray. So we got to find the right guy if we do decide to go that route. But for now, we'll stay conservative with where we're at. We just got into round two last year and uh, we didn't do like anything too crazy to upgrade. But I think what we can do is simulate going into the season and reflect on where we're at. And then once we're in the uh, trade deadline era or area, I guess I should say, we can make a potential superstar trade or whatever. I know we don't have all of our draft picks, but I feel like we have a good group of young guys and a couple draft picks in the future that we could probably still make something happen. So four star, seven seconds. They still want to start DeAndre Hunter over Risha Shea. Um, I, st I, I want to throw Risha Shea in there. So uh, we are going to make Hunter a non-starter. So that's how we'll do that. Um, so let's make DeAndre Hunter a non-starter. That way Risha Shea is in fact starting this year. Um, that way he develops as much as possible. And then we should... Big Golden. So Trey Young, Hugo, Risha Shea, Jalen Johnson, Okongwu, Capella, Daniels, Hunter, and then Obi Toppin. And then let's throw Trey Johnson in there as well. That kind of leaves Kobe Bufkin out of the rotation. So maybe he is a trade uh, candidate, you know, trade guy at the deadline because maybe he can never just crack the rotation. We still have Nicola as well. So yeah, like I said, I feel like we have a few gun guys that we could throw out there. So more than likely, we could make a superstar trade at the deadline if someone is available that we think makes sense next to Trey Young going forward. We have started the trade deadline as we're 25 and 26 on the season. And to me, there's only two guys I want to try to trade for here. Uh, we're pretty much, you know, like I said, a playing team at the moment. But uh, I feel like if we get one of these two guys, we can maybe skyrocket, skyrocket up the rankings a little bit. So the two guys we are particularly looking at is going to be Miami's Bam Adebayo. We could go for marketing, but I feel like I've just got him a little too much. So I'm going to pass on that today. And then the other guy is Anthony Davis on the Los Angeles Lakers. So I feel like both those guys would be perfect targets to try to put next to Trey Young uh for the foreseeable future now Anthony Davis like I said usually sucks in 2k but this is a share scenario where the guys don't regress as much I believe so I feel like we could maybe get away with getting AD on this team uh they're 15 and 36 I feel like we could potentially do something with that so um yeah I think that's will probably where we'll go with this so do we go for AD or Bam is the question either way I like it so we're gonna go for Anthony Davis so let's see if we get Anthony Davis here from the Lakers so we're gonna try to build a trade out so I think we got to throw Hunter's contract in here because that's salary that we're gonna have to throw in here this is gonna be a big salary to trade for and just to double check right I'm pretty sure we're not but if we are that just throws a wrench through everything uh but I can I can't imagine we're over the second apron right and we're not so thank thank goodness we're not so now LA considering they I mean, they lost LeBron, so I have to imagine they're not over the second apron anymore. So let's see if they are. The Lakers, they're not either. So we can make this trade. So uh, let's go talk to the Lakers about Anthony Davis. So let's see. Anthony Davis or DeAndre Hunter in this trade. Uh, we're going to probably try to keep. Uh, so we got to probably have to throw Capella in here considering we're trading out salary. So Capella. We're going to throw Okongwu in here as well. But if I can find a way to keep Okongwu out of this trade, that would be ideal. And then we just got Obi Toppin at the deadline, but maybe we have to throw him in here. Kobe Bufkin, as I said, is a candidate probably because he wasn't playing in the rotation. Uh, and then we probably have to throw one of Trey Johnson or Obi Toppin in here. And I'll probably do Obi Toppin. Although we just got him, I think we throw Obi Toppin in here now. Hopefully they have a couple minimum guys they can throw at us, like Colin Castleton. And let's say it's not Brawny, I guess, but let's say it's Maxwell Lewis. Okay, so Hunter Capella, Bufkin, Obi Toppin. So it looks like this might be able to go through. And then we uh, trade maybe this. Uh, so we got that Bucks pick. So that is a pretty good pick as well in 2026. That could actually be a fantastic pick. Uh, so what that is the Bucks pick. So do the Bucks. I wonder if the Bucks suck or not. I haven't really looked at that. But we're going for Anthony Davis. So I'm going to try to keep that Bucks pick out of the conversation and see if we can trade. Uh, wait, so what pick do the Spurs have? The Spurs have. So it looks like they have the... Oh, we already included it. So they have a 2026 pick swap. 
I'll do 2030 just to be safe. So let's say we did Hunter Capella, Buffkin, Obi Toppin, a 2026 pick, and 2030 for AD. It looks like they might accept this. So we pair Trey Young with Anthony Davis. Do we want Bam instead is the question. I mean, there's a lot of salary going in this trade, but I think all in all, this would give us a nice one-two punch with AD and Trey. And they do agree. So we get Trey Young and Anthony Davis paired together in Atlanta. So now we have Trey Young, Hugo, Risha Shea, Jalen Johnson, Anthony Davis. So we needed a second star. We got that with Anthony Davis. And that still allows guys like Risha Shea and Hugo to develop in uh, the shooting guard small forward spot. So I love that for us. We will also shrink this down to a nine-minute rotation. And we will go from there. So hopefully AD being brought, or AD being brought over is going to make this that much better. And Anthony Davis' shot tendency is tremendously low. Let's push that up. Again, AD kind of sucks in 2K, but I'm hoping in this share scenario, he'll be better. But we'll see if I ended up making a mistake. So Nikola Jokic wins MVP. VJ Edgecombe is your rookie of the year. Jairus Walker is your sixth man. Chet's a defensive player. Jairus Walker most improved as well. And Luka Doncic is your clutch player. And JB Bickerstaff is your coach of the year. Alexander Panel is your executive. So here's your NBA first team with Jokic, Luka, John Morant, Halliburton, and Giannis. We do get Anthony Davis making it, which is fantastic. And we don't, or no, we do get Trey Young. So Trey Young and AD both all NBA love to see that. So I'm glad we got Anthony Davis. Uh, and this team climbed up the standings just a tad bit. We got to the six seats. We avoid the play in finish up with like a 45 win season. So all in all, very solid. So 23 and 11 from Trey. And one thing that we decided to do as well is we extended Trey Young. I think uh, if you get Anthony Davis, Trey Young would probably would have signed an extension in that regard. And he does do that. So I love what we did. So Anthony Davis, Trey Young, Jalen Johnson, Hugo, Risha Shea. It's an, it's a nice starting five. It's intriguing for sure. But now we get Cleveland in round one. So we're going to be tested very early to see how we match up in the Eastern Conference. Uh, but we'll see, man. I really still like our rotation on where we're at. So we'll see if it ends up working out for us. So my current round against Cleveland and we are down two to zero, but we do end up evening, uh, evening the series up. And let's see if we can come out here and win game five. I would love to see us in round two again and maybe be able to win round two. And it looks good for game five. So we are going to win game five in Cleveland. So now... We can go out there and win game six. We're on to round two once again, and we got to feel pretty good about ourselves. So this one's off to a great start. It looks like they're kind of climbing back in the game a little bit, and I think we did it. So we are going to beat the Cavs in six games. 27 for Jalen Johnson, 23 and 16 from AD. And now we get the 76ers or the Knicks, so two powerhouses in the East. So we definitely have our work cut out for us here. So Philadelphia, you got uh, Maxi, Paul, George still, Poro, Kill, Martin, Joel Embiid, Andre Drummond, McCain, Dinwiddie, Pokoshevsky, and Stojakovic. So... Very, very good team in Philadelphia. So here we go. Game one. One is zero goes to us. Beat them by six. So AD versus Embiid would definitely be fun. Maxi versus Trey would be fun as well. Uh, but they even the series up. I don't think this is going to be an easy series by any means. But we do beat them uh, in game three. So we're up two to one. Three to one would look great. And it does. We blow them out. And can we win game four? Or sorry, game five. But no. Ooh, I would love to get back to go play Detroit again. I want to see if I can get my... Uh, what do they call it? Lick back against Detroit. So let's see if we can come out here and beat the 76ers to go to the finals. And we got ourselves a close one. And we're going to steal it at the end. No, we don't. Okay. So we got a game seven. Let's go eight-man rotation. And let's play that. So Josh Richardson found a way in the rotation somehow. Uh, who was playing? I think it was Maxwell Lewis. I was getting minutes over him. But regardless, we're going to an eight-man rotation. Trey Johnson is going to start, I guess. So game seven in Philly to please get us to the conference finals to go see if we can get revenge on Detroit. Uh, so Philadelphia's had the lead for most of the game, and it looks like they may seal us here. And we're down 13. So, damn, a little bit of a good run, but we are going to get bounced in round two again. So I guess we take a little bit of a baby step. Instead of getting eliminated in six, we can eliminate it in seven. But regardless, still not to our ultimate goal as Detroit goes on to win it all. Kate is your finals MVP. So Brooke Lopez, DeRozan are calling it a career. All right, so what do we do now? So it looks like we projected a lottery pick. So that is that Milwaukee pick, also from the DeJounte Murray trade, which feels good. So it is projected to be pick 11. So let's see if we can climb up and get lucky. Atlanta did it with Alex, the Alex Star draft. And uh, it actually is protected, apparently. Wait, is that right? Or yeah, so it looks like that pick was protected, I guess. Or did we get a different pick? I don't know. Um, I don't even see our names low key. Or right, we got 10 via New Orleans. So um okay maybe that's what it's supposed to be are we get aren't we supposed to get the worst of that pick or whatever i think that's what the wording is or the best i can't remember regardless it's 10 and 11 who cares i'm not going to fix it over one draft pick so we have a lottery pick still i am going to keep quinn snyder because i think he's done a good job 
So if he will stay, that's great. So we get him back and then let's grab Kevin Young and see if he'll, you know, come or not come back. Or I don't even know if he was our assistant, but um, I guess we can't get him. So can we get like Gentry or no? His ratings suck. What else can we get? Um, Assistant. Let me fill this out and I'll see you guys are found him. Okay, let's go. Dan Hurley. Yo, yo, Dan Hurley. Want to become an assistant in Atlanta? Yo, Joe Tacoma has got Dan Hurley in the game. Let's get it. All right, let's go to draft night. Let's see what we're going to get at pick 10 with this 2026 draft. We have Drake Powell, Jack. We have Sid. We have Caleb Wilson. I'll take Drake Powell here out of North Carolina. And that's a project as we keep going forward. Or maybe another trade piece. Who knows? So, Risha Shea, Lewis Booker, accepting all those. Qualifying offers, Nicola and Dyson Daniels. So, we are going to try to resign Dyson Daniels as long as they're not asking for too much. So, uh, obviously, he's not started enough. Or, yeah. So, he's asking for a nice amount off the bench. Good defender, so 50 million. You know, role players are getting a lot of money nowadays. I don't think that's too crazy. So I'll give Dyson Daniels his contract. We're pretty much locking ourselves into this roster with the hopes that we eventually improve. But I believe we will see some development this year. So we don't have a forward anymore. So that's probably where we should go with this. We can get Bo Champ on a restricted offer. We got Simone. We got Rui, Washington, Jovic. Uh, a lot of interesting options here. Where are we at as far as the second April is concerned? So we are over it. So technically, we cannot sign an MLE. Uh, but I saw like Simone for a minimum, which wouldn't be too bad. Five bulls down here, a Uh, So give me Simone on a minimum, another shooter off the bench. I think I can be happy with that. And then Nicola, if he comes back with his qualifying offer, maybe he's good enough to play next year. We can live with that as well. So he's back and he is not developed enough. Or Drake Powell, if we move him to small forward, he might even be able to play over Simone to, to be honest with you. So, or we can move Trey Johnson. Like we could do a bunch of things. So um let's move drake powell though since he'll actually probably into rotation over simone we only give simone a minimum so we're not like that committed to him but uh all in all i think we're going into this third season feeling very confident with uh guys developing that uh maybe we can take a jump and finally get to that conference finals that's what we want to do eventually so we'll see if we can finally do that in this third season so the power's gonna land a second overall so 2k is high on us Trey young hugo ad same starting five as last year and the guys develop a little bit more. So you have uh, Trey Young, Hugo, Risha Shea, Jalen Johnson, AD, still Okungwu, Daniels, Trey Johnson, Drake Powell. Uh, if we run an amateur rotation, that is. So we'll run that. And all right, assimilate year three. And let's see how well this goes for us. So at the end of year three, Jokic is your MVP. Isaiah, Rookie of the Year for the Kings. Nicola is your sixth man. Uh, Topic that is. You got Wimby, defensive player. Johnny Davis, most improved. And Trey is your clutch player. So that's cool to see. And Steve Kerr, coach of the year. So... Uh, do we get all NBA representatives for both guys? AD, all NBA second team again, and Trey, not this year. Not a third team for Trey this year. Uh, but here's all offensive team and all rookie team and all rookie second team. So we ended up as the first seed in the East. So uh, I feel like that's not too surprising. We've been kind of building a rapport here in Atlanta, but 23 from AD, 22 for Trey Young, 17 from Jalen Johnson, 14 from Risha Shea, and 13 from Hugo. 9 from Okongwu, 9 from Trey Johnson, 8 from Daniels, and 5.5 from Drake Powell. So all that is looking great. But all none of that matters if we can't get to the conference finals, NBA finals, and so on. So let's see if we can come out here and beat the Knicks. Trey Young, of course, was once the villain in Madison Square Garden at one point. But still make around against New York. They do have an intimidating roster as we're up 3-2. to two, And we're going to a Game 7. So Game 7... In Atlanta, it looks like we want to fix rotation a little bit. So Trey Johnson is going to start the game seven in Atlanta. Hopefully we don't get bounced around one here. If we do, I'm going to be very, and we are going to be bounced around one. It looks like, all right. So not great. Not great. Um, not that doesn't feel great. Not going to lie. Uh, so losing to New York Knicks in round one as the first seed feels terrible. So Brooklyn of all teams goes on and win it all. Kyrie went back to Brooklyn. Okay. All right. Well, I think we give this one more final chance. I Although the problem is, is we kind of went all in on this roster. So what do you do after that? I think Quinn Snyder might have to be fired. Although he would be fired, but he's just so good. Like his, he just has so many good ratings that I'm not going to fire him. So yeah, I guess we're just going to run it back again. Like literally we're over the second apron uh, and we're not gonna be able to do anything. So uh, I'm not, I don't think I have a draft pick here, but let me just double check. I mean, it's the 2027 draft. We're kind of the point we're contending at this point. But yeah. Uh, we got Risha, Hugo, Trey Johnson, all as team options. And then I'm assuming I have a important qualifying offer. So nothing too crazy. But Nicola is a free agent. All right. So, um, I, like I said, man, I think we're simply about to just run it back for another year and just hope development 
helps out with that because I feel like losing in round one was a little fluky. I don't know. It just kind of feels like a fluke. But uh, and again, like I said, we're over the second apron. So, yeah, I could make a trade in theory, but it would just be kind of tough to do that. Especially when guy when the rest of our roster gets filled out, we're, we'll well be over the second apron. Uh, so, I mean, the only thing we can really do is like just kind of wait for Nicola and guys to come back with a qualifying offer and run it back for a third season. So, hopefully, third and or sorry, fourth season, I should say, we'll match Booker, even though we probably shouldn't have because he hasn't played a single minute for us, but whatever. Um, and then we'll get Nicola back his qualifying offer. We do. And AD is going down, but you have everyone else developing. So, Drake Powell, Hugo. I did not move as an 81. I guess we can move in a small four technically, but I'm going to leave things as they are. We'll gotta, we're will we going to run it back for another season. We've locked in this roster. We got the first seed last year. We just pretty much have to hope that losing in round one to the Knicks was a fluke, and we'll, we'll be better next year. That's kind of what I'm banking on. Could be a mistake on my part, but uh, I'm going to live with it. So proficiency. I mean, do we change the proficiency maybe? Probably won't. Probably just leave it how it is. We'll just run it back for another year and hope this year is going to be different. We'll see what happens. So we are here for our final season as we are the second seed in the East this year. 22 from Trey, 21 from AD, and 16 from Jalen Johnson. All right. So all in all, I'm hoping we can just avoid the Knicks as we don't have to play them in round one. But we do get the Pacers who have Halliburton, Mather, Neesmith, Siakam, Turner, Walker, Isaiah Jackson, and Jaden Hardy. Obviously, let's just get past round one. I get uh, bounced this year, and we are. I literally tried to hold B to stop things, and clearly 2K did not register that. But we just blew a 3 to 0 lead, so I'm just going to end it there because clearly this isn't good enough. Um, Okay, so that was unexpected. Did not see that happening or, you know, coming, but uh, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. Hey, maybe my Blazers can win the championship in the video. And no, that can't even happen either. Well, guys, I'm going to end it there. Atlanta, you suck. Or, or I suck. You know, either way, it's fine. But hey, whatever. Next week, I think I'm starting the new look rebuild series. I can no longer wait on, uh, you know, moves to happen. Hope you guys enjoyed this video regardless of the crap ending. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.